that hard. Hey, what's going on, Salt Strong? Richard here, and today we're gonna to be going over the top three mistakes that I see anglers make when using popping corks. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, guys, so the first mistake that I see a lot of anglers make, and this is whether you're with a popping cork with an artificial or live bait, is not allowing the cork to do a dead drift. And what I mean by that is by allowing it to just go with the current without any tension on the line. So many times I see where folks are basically holding uh, tension on the line, and what that is doing is creating an unnatural presentation. So you wanna make sure that this cork is going with the current as the current moves to make sure that your shrimp or lure or even your live bait is moving at the same speed of the current and you don't have any unnatural movement or tension on it. Now the other problem that creates when you have too much tension on your line is what's happening is your lure or your live bait is actually riding up higher in the current than you want it to because the tension is actually pulling it up. Now if you have a good dead drift, the weight that you have is actually gonna bring it down into that strike zone where you want it. So you wanna make sure that you have a good dead drift before you make a pop and you allow that lure or bait to ride naturally in the current. All right, guys, so the second mistake that I see people make all the time is they pop the cork too often. Now, there's not a secret recipe or anything like that, and a lot of times it does depend on conditions. However, if you are continually popping this cork, what's happening is your lure is not given the time to get back down in that strike zone. So what you wanna do is make sure you have a good, solid pop but you don't do it so much where all of a sudden your lure can't get back down to that strike zone. And guys, I can't tell you how many times I've actually caught fish without popping this cork at all. Just having that natural dead drift like I was talking about in our first point really works a lot. And then the pop is just what attracts the fish. So if you're just continually popping the cork, you're gonna get less strikes overall. So you really wanna make sure after you make that pop, you kind of mentally take a note of how fast your lure or bait is actually sinking. And right about the time where you think it's kind of stretched all the way out and it's in that strike zone, that's when you can go ahead and make another pop if you want to. But like I said many times, I have just thrown it out there, made one pop, let it ride in the current for you know 15 feet, and then gotten a strike without any other pop. So it really depends on the conditions. Like I said, there's no magic number, but you definitely wanna make sure that your lure is getting far enough down into the strike zone where it should be. All right, guys, the third tip I have today to make sure you can catch more fish with popping corks is just the mistake I see all the time is folks, when they go to use the popping cork, they make a huge, long, two or three foot rod movement um, with the tip of their rod. And what that does, it does not create that natural popping sound. So it actually moves the cork through the water way too far and it doesn't need to. And if you've ever heard trout, snook, or other game fish hit and pop the top of the water, it really sounds like that. It sounds like a pop. But when all of a sudden you make a big long movement and this cork just drags through the water, it's not a natural feeding sound for those fish. And you may still catch some fish that way, but you're not gonna catch near as many compared to if you do a quick snap and a hard pop. And a couple things you can do to make sure that you get that is one, make sure you've got just a little bit of slack in your line, not a lot, enough where you can still reel in and catch a fish, but if you have a little bit of slack when you go to make that pop, it creates a little bit more of a fast action on that line versus it being tight already. Then the bend of your rod is actually inhibiting that sharp, snappy motion that you want. So have a little bit of slack in your line and that'll really help. Other thing is you can do a pop that's going straight up and down, but the big thing is you wanna make sure that it does a quick snap and a pop not a long, you know, one foot movement of just pushing water because doing that is not near as natural compared to that quick pop that makes some bubbles. And then as well, we want to make sure that it comes back down and you can hear these little beads click. These little beads clicking are really where it's at. After you make that initial pop, these beads are on here because that simulates shrimp or bait fish trying to escape and get away. So you wanna make sure that this cork has time to get back upright again and then fall and make these beads make their sound. Because by doing that, that's gonna be a natural presentation where you have the pop, which is the you know initial kind of explosion of the fish. And then you've got the beads, which are the bait fish trying to escape. 
And just while I've got it out here, guys, probably my favorite lure to use with a pop and cork is a shrimp style profile. I've got our Power Prawn Junior right here. I also use the Power Prawn, the full size as well. They both work great. Just depends on what size the shrimp are where you're fishing. But I really, really like a shrimp profile better. Put a little bit of Dr. Juice on it. I usually have a quarter ounce to an eighth of an ounce depending on how deep and how fast or darting of an action I want this shrimp to be. But this is a great, great presentation with popping corks, especially when there's a ton of bait around. It helps yours stand out and get eaten. And remember guys, you can go to our shop page at fishstrong.com and you can get these lures and much more. So definitely go there and check it out. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best online fishing club for saltwater anglers, especially if you're targeting redfish, sea trout, snook, or flounder. There's nothing else like it, and we actually guarantee that you'll catch more fish while saving time and money. We do this with our premium education, exclusive insider community, and huge discounts on all the tackle you need. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon.